Hey, welcome back to the channel, Amazing Humans. So, listen, I want to talk to you about a biblical word. And um, again, I think it's a very interesting one because we hear certain things attached to it that I don't think are helpful. And it's taken from one of my favorite verses. And remember, the Bible is not written to the human ego. Never. It never has been, never will be. And when we interpret it, as a historical book, it doesn't help us. So we have to look at this as a guidebook for the inner self and the inner imagination. Okay. So when you read Isaiah 40, right. Um, and it talks about, you know, flying on the wings of an eagle and soaring and so on. Okay. So there's loads that are going on, but before that, in the early part of that verse, it talks about strength. Okay, and this is a very important word because when we hear strength, we automatically think physically strong. That's most of what people think when they have an image of strong. This is not what this verse is talking about, right? And they will soar like on wings of eagles and so on. And I know I'm butchering the verse, but for me, the crux, the heartbeat of the whole verse is fundamentally understanding what is being talked about when the word strength is being used. Okay, and if you want to, feel free to share that verse context below. Okay, but the whole kind of course of, of what's happening here when we understand strength as physical strength is that that doesn't help us, right? That doesn't help us because remember, this is talking to the mind. This is talking to the inner imagination. Okay, and so it's saying if you want to be strong, if you want to feel strong, it doesn't mean I need to go build a six pack. There's nothing wrong with having a six pack, right? But it's not talking about that kind of strength, okay? And yes, it is talking about inner strength, but this particular word is very interesting because when you drill down into the Hebrew, right? Yes, you get the idea of courage, okay? But it's even more than that. In fact, if you drill down even further, it's almost as if the word itself gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in what it's talking about. In fact, a great word, and this is not my word, but I love it, absolutely love it, when you drill down, is what we call muchness. Okay, so one of my favorite movies is with uh, Johnny Depp, and it's um, the Tim Burton version of Alice in Wonderland. Now, Neville talks about Alice in Wonderland several times. I'm working on a you know, play with that and all this kind of stuff. But what I want to do is I want to talk about that scene. There's a scene in the first Alice in Wonderland with, with, with Johnny Depp, right? And it's when Alice is still kind of like midway through and she's already in, in Wonderland, but she can't really, really come to the point to accept that she is who she says she is, right? And, and that she's the real Alice who's actually returned from her childhood, okay? And then the Mad Hatter kind of looks over at her, almost disappointed and somewhat frustrated, and says, you're not Alice because you've lost your muchness. Okay, so this is very, very key to fully understand and grasp what the Bible, and by the way, this isn't just the Bible and that verse in Isaiah. But anytime you ever hear word, the word strength, hear muchness. But what is being said? What, what's muchness and how does it, and, and, and how can it help us understand manifestation? Well, okay, every time you accept a label about yourself, you hide a certain aspect of yourself. Because remember, we are all divine in origin, all of us. Every single human that has ever lived, will live, living now, is divine in origin, okay? And so this is why Neville really, really argues it, it, it's important before we even go in and create scenes to sit in the I am state, right? And so, and, and the I am state is you without labels, you without history, you without name, you without feelings, you without reactions, you without history you without rehearsed memories, right? Anything that you think that you are, you, you let that go. It's the observer observing you. You are the observer and you are observing you, right? And you are the you that's being observed. You're all of it, okay? So you are the ecosystem that is observing and the observer as well. It's all related, okay? So muchness is ultimately when we have tied ourselves into labels. That's losing our muchness, okay? And we think those labels are exactly who we are. Well, according to the Bible, that's taking our strength away. Okay? So that means we hold all of our identity labels loosely. 
It means we don't take them as seriously and we don't give them as much power as we probably have in the past, right? And so, you know, we're always bouncing in and out of states. Another way of saying that is that we're constantly changing our beliefs and our perceptions throughout every day, okay? But if we're not, then we're continuously and actively involved in losing our muchness. So, and I really don't like what I'm about, I'm about to say because I'm trying to find a better word for muchness to give you a better grasp of what the Bible is talking about when it's, when it's referring to muchness, but it's about potential. But it's also about potential that's tied into power, and but inner power, inner mental power, right? And then also growth and then faith. Like, so everything that we could think of within the spiritual world of, of ourselves being the creator, that's what we're losing when we lose our muchness. But then this, this verse is giving you, by the way, an actual handbook, right? If you read just the actual, like I, Isaiah 40, right? It's telling you how to manifest and how to get back that muchness. And so it says, when we're soaring on wings of eagles, well, what does the eagle do? Or when we're rising, well, rising is what? Rising in consciousness. You are no longer the person you are now. And how do you get that muchness back? rising, soaring on the wings of eagles, right? And so you rise above your current limitations. You rise above and you see the solution. You rise above and you react from the solution, right? And by the way, I'm going to do one on an action and whether you should act and when you should act and all this kind of stuff. But I want to say about action, and this is the short of it, not the long of it, you can act. You can act every day. We're acting every day anyways. What you have to be aware of is where am I acting from? Okay, so are you soaring on the wings of eagle and changing your reaction and interpretation and feelings towards something? Or are you still in the same position that you were an hour ago? Because Neville says, listen, and this is a, a technique, one hour later, this is a, a um, he, he actually says, listen, one hour later, if you are examining yourself and, you know, and if you're not, then you're not, right? Meaning not examining yourself, but if you are not still in the same confidence of, hey, I'm ecstatic because I would be ecstatic if I had whatever I had, right? Then you are not holding to the faith, okay? Are you with me so far? So what I want to do is I want to encourage you to recognize what labels have you accepted? What are the things that you have taken on as true that don't serve you? Begin ignoring those labels. Begin replacing them with powerful labels until those new labels are stronger than those. Because if you don't, you're going to be actively involved in participating in losing your own muchness. And we need to bring that back. Remember, it means potential, but it also means potential with power and growth and your divinity, right? You're losing that actual power you have by buying into the emotions and memories and beliefs that don't serve you, right? And so stop rehearsing the old story and start rehearsing the new one. And that's how you actually take on this mystical understanding of the biblical word for strength. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, get in touch. Much love to you all. Be safe in the world.